and the flowers of our fields and gods this film will show some of the seeds we obtain from seed plants will illustrate their structure and demonstrate how they develop there are two kinds of plants that produce seeds those that produce seeds from flowers are called those that produce seeds mostly in cones like the pines and other conifers are called gymnosperms an apple tree is an angiosperm the apple blossoms produce seeds which are inside the protective called the ovary the ovary soon ripens into an apple the apple contains the seed angiosperms bear their seeds enclosed in an ovary In gymnosperms, there is no ovary. The seeds are born naked on the surface of the cone scale. Gymnosperm means naked seed. Seeds are of many sizes and shapes. These winged pine seeds are about an inch long. Carrot seeds are so small that they can hardly be seen. Bean seeds are much larger and shaped rather like a kidney. Pea seeds are round. The peanut, too, is a seed, and so are the Brazil nuts in their hard, thick shell. But all these seeds are tiny compared with this coconut seed. Although seeds don't all look alike, they are alike in three ways. Each seed has in it a tiny plant called the embryo. Here's the miniature tree or embryo of the pine seed. Within the embryo itself, or surrounding it, is a stored food on which the plant lives as it first starts to grow. Each seed also has one or more coats, which will help to protect the little plant inside from drying out and from injury. The embryo in a seed like the bean is well developed. The food supply is contained here in the two parts of the embryo called seed leaves or cotyledons. On the right is a corn seed. In a corn seed, the food supply is located outside the embryo. This food supply, or endosperm, consists of starch, protein, and some oil. Notice that the bean seed on the left has two cotyledons, whereas the corn embryo on the right has only one. Plants bearing seeds that have two cotyledons are called dicotyledons. Those that bear seeds with only one cotyledon are called monocotyledons. Each seed embryo also has a plumule and a hypocotyl. The plumule is the part of the embryo which lies above the cotyledons or seed leaves. From the plumule, the stem, leaves and flowers develop. That part of the embryo below the cotyledon is called the hypocotyl. The root system develops from the lower end of the hypocotyl. We have seen that every seed contains a miniature plant or embryo. When a plant emerges from a seed, we say that it's germinating. Now, with the aid of the time-lapse camera, we will watch a pine seedling germinate. Pine trees may continue to grow for two or three hundred years. Before germination, like those of the silver maple, may germinate as soon as they mature. Silver maples mature in late spring and are ready to grow at once. A few other trees, including the poplars and willows, also have seeds that ripen in the spring. But the harvest time for most seeds comes in summer or autumn. Then, millions of seeds of flowers, vegetables, and grains are collected and stored for future use. Seeds that remain dormant may do so for many weeks, months, or even years after maturing. If they began to grow as soon as they were mature, we could not store them. As these seeds ripen, they lose most of their moisture. For example, these dry, shriveled peas are dormant. 
to begin germination, such seeds must first absorb large amounts of water. With the time-lapse camera, we can watch the swelling of the pea seed as water is taken in. The process we are now seeing usually takes up 24 hours. Notice how the water first softens the seed coat so that growth can begin. When planted, the embryo in each seed begins to grow. In addition to water, the seed also needs oxygen from the air and a favourable temperature. Some seeds, like these coffee beans, have very hard seed coats. They can be soaked for many weeks without any apparent effect. For germination to begin, water must somehow get through the hard seed coat. One way to aid this process is to file a knot in the coat. In nature, this may be done by freezing and thawing, by bacteria and fungi. Notice how the notched coffee seed swells while the unnotched seed remains unchanged. These are the seeds of a white pine tree. They have already been soaked in water, but for them, soaking may not be enough to start germination. Most white pine seeds need to be kept at a low temperature for several weeks, in addition to being kept moist. We can break their dormancy by duplicating winter conditions. When the artificial winter is over and the temperature is raised, the seeds will germinate and grow. In the box on the left are soaked but unchilled pine seeds. The seeds on the right were stored moist in a refrigerator for five weeks. It's easy to tell which group has been cold treated. Cold causes chemical changes in the seed. Then, when the temperature is raised, the embryo begins to grow. We will plant some bean and corn seeds and watch them grow. Germination begins with the emergence of the hypocotyl through the seed coat. The hypocotyl arches, grows longer, and finally pulls the two large seed leaves, or cotyledons, through the earth. The food stored in the cotyledons nourishes the seedling until it develops two leaves capable of making a steady supply of food for the plant. The two leaves can now take in carbon dioxide from the air. Meanwhile, the roots take the necessary water and minerals from the soil. And now, exhausted, the cotyledons drop from the plant. Corn seedlings are now emerging from the soil. Each one sends up a hard, slender spear that pierces the ground. Inside the spear are the two leaves. Corn is a monocotyledon, that is, it has only one seed leaf. This single cotyledon remains underground. There it digests and distributes to the growing seedlings the food stored in the seed until the two leaves are ready to make plant food. Now let's watch the underground growth of a corn seed and a bean seed. The bean is on the left. Notice the difference between the bean's long single tap root and the lateral root system of the corn. The spreading, fibrous roots of the corn are typical of the grass family, to which corn belongs. A large seed doesn't necessarily grow into a proportionately large plant. Here is a seed of the western nut pine, and here a seed of the redwood tree. The nut pine seed develops into a small scrubby tree. While the redwood may grow to be over 300 feet tall.
we have seen that a seed is really a tiny plant or embryo packed with a supply of food inside protective covers. We have observed that seeds must absorb large amounts of water before growth can begin. And that seeds grow when conditions are right. play an important part in our work. We depend on them for much of our food and clothing and for the wood we use. The world's ever-increasing population makes it essential for us to learn more about the growing of plants from seed. We must also learn how to make use of the many plants whose value hasn't so far been realized. For example, from these rhizomes of the cattail plant, flour can be ground. Flour for the production of more food. There is still much to be learned about the different kinds of seeds and how they grow. 